For more on this, I want to bring in Dave Harden. He's the former director of the U.S. Agency for International Development for the West Bank and Gaza, and he's in Westminster, Maryland for us today. So, Dave, so great for you to come back and speak with us once again. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, Hillary. Good to be back with you. So we know that the World Central Kitchen, so this aid agency, that they had coordinated their movements with the IDF. They were traveling in vehicles marked with their logo. I believe you could even see the logo on top of one of those vehicles in one of the photographs that we showed. How could this have happened then? The fact of the matter is, six months into this war, the deconfliction mechanisms between aid workers, humanitarians on the one hand, and the Israelis on the other is broken. It, it never was stood up sufficiently. And uh, the Israelis made a tragic error that was the result of negligent deconfliction. We have heard from the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony, Antony Blinken. He's calling for a swift investigation. We heard there just a couple of minutes ago, we played a little bit from the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, saying that they are looking into this, but also saying that this is the sort of thing that happens in wartime. Do you think that there really will be an adequate investigation that will take place here? What are your thoughts on that about how this investigation might proceed? Not good enough. We don't need another investigation, which probably would be ad hoc. We need a, a systematic deconfliction mechanism. And frankly, we need uh, the hostages released and a longer term ceasefire. But let me let me aside from the fact kind of push in that an investigation is, is frankly meaningless at this point. Wor World Central Kitchen delivered 42 million meals in the last 175 days. They have suspended operations. The Israelis will not work with UNRWA, so their operations are down to a minimal bare bones. Anira, who brought in, for all intents and purposes, uh, World Central Kitchen, just suspended their operations. Anira has delivered 150,000 meals every single day. So together, you're seeing the bulk of the humanitarian response basically sidelined or suspended. This is... This is a, a, a tragedy that rests with the IDF and Bibi Netanyahu. And by the way, the United States is not blameless here. Uh, we, we've been in this for six months and, and we still don't have a deconfliction mechanism that works. It's negligent and catastrophic. How do you think that this will or will it affect the relationship between the Israelis and the Americans? Because we've seen just today even uh, there is word that the Israeli opposition leader is going to be traveling to Washington. Uh, no word on who he's going to be meeting with. But how do you think this is going to sort of affect that relationship between uh, the, of course, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Americans, but also the fact that you now have the opposition leader traveling to Washington as well? So there are some insider Washington cultural elements attached to this attack. Um, let me begin by saying that the World Central Kitchen was enormously innovative and results oriented. Not only did they deliver 42 million meals, but they also set in the first cargo ship with 200 uh, with 200 metric tons of food. But interestingly, the founder of World Central Kitchen is Jose Andres. He's a renowned chef, but he's a local hero in Washington, D.C. There isn't anyone at the State Department or the White House or USAID who hasn't been to Jose Andres restaurants in D.C. So there's a cultural element here that is much deeper than what you would normally expect. And I think the fact that they are going to suspend operations is, is, is a profound matter that actually is going to affect, um, a, a, a affect policy. Let me just say one other thing. Not only does Jose Andres do humanitarian work in Gaza or run you know, successful restaurants in Washington, D.C., but he's deeply connected to the people. He threw out the first pitch in the 2019 World Series fifth game that the Nationals won that championship. He, he served 900,000 meals in Washington, D.C. during COVID. He is a hero, a hero. And so this is a profound profound loss, not only for the families, and it's heartbreaking for them, and the Gazans who will continue to suffer, but from a policy perspective. Hmm. I think there's probably a lot of Canadians as well who have gone down to D.C. Uh, and have eaten at some of those restaurants who might be familiar with this here. Just finally That's then, Dave, 
sorry, go on, go ahead. No, I mean, look, Canada also suffers loss here. There was a mm. Canadian citizen that was killed in, in this uh, mix. I mean, there, there were six foreign expatriates that were in there working. As, as Anthony Blinken said, they were running into uh, catastrophe and tragedy in, in trying to help, and they were cut short. It, 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 there are no words. What do you think is going to happen now, going forward, now that this has happened? So here's something that we don't know that could happen. When Anira suspended operations, if one or two more uh, international NGOs suspend operation, this will put enormous pressure on both the Israelis and the Americans. And NGOs are willing to take risks, but they're not willing to take unlimited risks. And so they have to first and foremost protect their people. They have a duty of care to their people so they don't get killed. Um, I think if you see a cascade of other NGOs that suspend operations, I think this could have a profound implication on the Israeli responsibility and their duty of care to the guys and people. Dave, as always, great to have you on to get your thoughts and your analysis. We really do appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you, Hillary. Dave Harden for us.